Welcome to YouTube XV1. For critical review is Mark Passio in a piece titled The Number One Reason We're Slaves. Please like and subscribe. Thank you. So the very first thing that is the main reason the freedom movement is failing is that the overwhelming majority of the people within the freedom movement still to this day remain ignorant of natural law and how it works. And this is, is the main governing dynamic. So what is natural law? Natural law is a set of universal, inherent, objective, non-man-made, eternal and immutable conditions which govern the consequences of the behaviors of beings with the capacity for understanding the difference between harmful behavior and non-harmful behavior. Yes, that's a mouthful uh, as a working definition for a governing dynamic in nature. But let's just briefly break that down. It's universal. It exists everywhere. Everywhere in the universe. It's inherent. That means it's part of nature. It's not a constructural idea of the human mind. It's part of nature itself. It's objective. That means it is not subject to human interpretation. It exists independently of how anyone thinks about it. It's non-man-made. That's pretty self-evident what that means. It means it comes from nature, not from humanity. It's eternal. It will never not exist. It exists for as long as the universe exists. It's immutable. That means it cannot be changed. These conditions are unchangeable by anything humanity is capable of doing or any other being or situation. It, it does not make a difference what is done. These conditions remain in effect. And they govern the consequences of our behavior. That's what I mean by governing dynamics. We behave, we have free will to behave, and we can choose our behaviors, but we are not insulated from the consequences of our behavior. And they, these governing dynamics, these natural laws, affect and, are, and, and bind those that have the capacity for understanding the difference between right and wrong. They, are, they do not apply to the animals. They apply to beings that are human and higher level intelligence than human. Meaning you have to have the capacity in the mind for the definitive understanding between behaviors that are rights and between behaviors that are wrongs, wrongdoings that violate human rights. So the understanding of natural law is all centered upon bringing human conscience, that's the knowledge of the difference between right and wrong, into alignment with objective morality. That's act, actually choosing right behavior over wrong behavior. And not we're not talking about religion here. This is, this is absolutely non-religious. This has nothing to do with religion. This is a science of nature. It's a science of behavior and the consequence of behavior, and the science of how the dynamics of freedom and tyranny actually work in nature. There, this constitutes a science that is, as of yet, unknown by humanity, not in its fullness. Some people have an inkling of it. Some people know more about how it works than others. But as a species, we remain almost completely ignorant regarding natural law, and that's why we're still enslaved. Conscience is the definitive knowledge of which behaviors are rights because they do not initiate harm to other sentient beings and which behaviors are wrong because they do initiate harm to other sentient beings. That's the real, definable, objective difference between right behavior and wrong behavior. It is not a guess. It is not something that you find in a religious text. It is not something that we invent. It's not a constructural idea of the mind. When we behave and harm results in the natural world, then that is a wrongdoing. If we behave and harm is not initiated in the natural world, that action is a right. It's, that's actually very simple. If people get their clouded and previously distorted thinking out of their head, because they're running mind viruses. And mind viruses prevent people from understanding real governing dynamics, especially natural law. 
The fundamental nature of humanity's continued loss of freedom is that most human beings do not have a full and accurate understanding of objective morality. The true and actual difference between right behavior and wrong behavior in nature slash reality. Ignorance of true morality leads human beings to erroneously believe that violent and harmful behaviors based upon the belief in authority are somehow morally legitimate and acceptable when they are absolutely not morally legitimate at all. The belief in authority comes out of people's ignorance of natural law. There is no such thing as human authority. Never has been, never will be. Doesn't exist now, never will exist. Has never existed. There is a claim, an immoral, violent claim of authority that holds people in duress for disobeying the ruling class's decrees that they call law. And all that is is a usurpation of natural law. It's a usurpation of the laws of the universe, of the creator of the universe. And that's what these people in so-called power, in earthly, worldly power, want. They want to usurp the laws of nature and become God. That's what Satanism is. That's what dark occultism is, which is we're going to get to in a moment. As a result of people's complete lack of understanding of objective morality and their belief in human authority, many, many behaviors which most human beings conduct and condone are completely out of alignment with natural law which leads to the continuation and furtherance of human slavery. It leads to the creation of slavery, it leads to the continuation of slavery, and it leads to slavery becoming deeper and deeper bondage. This dynamic is expressed in the natural law of the law of freedom. And the, the law of freedom states that as morality and aggregate uh, sorry, aggregate morality and aggregate freedom are directly proportional to each other. So the total morality of the population of human beings is going to be completely proportional to the total freedom of human beings. So what does that say about how moral human beings are? If they're completely proportional degrees and humanity is enslaved, then their aggregate behavior cannot be very moral. When we add it all up, and all the human beings add up, if we place like a little index on their behavior of how, of how moral it is from a scale of 1 to 100 and added up everybody's moral index in the whole world, it would be pretty damn low. When it comes to not really understanding the true objective difference between rights and wrongs. And that's the problem. That, come, that, that boils it down to the very simple dynamic is that most people don't know the difference between right and wrong still to this day. And they're not being taught the difference. Here is the law of freedom stated as simply as it can be stated. The aggregate freedom of human beings is directly proportional to the aggregate morality of their behavior. That's it. It's that simple. And most people still don't understand that on this planet. And once again, I'm one of the only people really repeating this over and over and saying it to people and telling people you need to understand this, you need to communicate this, you need to teach this to others. And yet, hardly anybody even mentions the word morality in the freedom movement. Very few. Very few. Uh, you know, you hear uh, podcasts and, you know, video shows and people writing books and all of the information you could gather, everybody's just talking about the, the plane of effects. They're talking about the 3D happenings. They're talking about what new technology or system can we put into effect? How can we reform this existing thing? They don't understand what needs to be torn down and completely dismantled and decimated is wrong thought. And what really needs to be integrated and understood is true governing dynamics and how they work in nature. And you hear so few people talking about any of that. And that's why the freedom movement's failing. It's the number one reason.